Greetings, everyone, and welcome. Before we begin with our video, I'd like to kindly ask you to subscribe and leave a like to show your support. Thank you. Now let's begin. My heart was pounding as I pulled into the dusty parking lot of Joyland Amusement Park. The place had been shut down for decades after some kind of accident, but tonight they were reopening for a special Halloween Haunts event. Even in the fading evening light, the once colorful rides looked faded and decayed, rusty metal coiling towards the sky like broken bones. I joined the small queue of people waiting to get inside, my friend Kara nervously clutching my arm. Kara and I had heard the rumors of what went down at Joyland, the whispers of something sinister lurking behind the carnival masks. A thin man in a crumpled suit took our tickets, his eyes hollow pits as he waved us through the turnstile. We wandered through the empty fairgrounds, the tinny music of calliope and laughter echoing all around. An acrid smell hung in the air, like burnt machinery and rotting food. Kara stopped at the rickety wooden slats of the Tunnel of Terrors, a drooping canvas tent leading into blackness. Should we? She whispered. Before I could answer, a blood-curdling scream erupted from the depths of the tunnel. We froze, Kara's nails digging into my arm. Then another scream, joined by a chorus of tormented wails. Someone came staggering out of the exit, face contorted in pure horror, suit spattered with what looked like blood. Run! He rasped at us and then collapsed to the dirt. Kara and I stood paralyzed, the scream seeming to shift into something deeper, more guttural, dripping with malice and hunger. The lights around us started to flicker and spark. We have to get out of here, I managed, pulling Kara away from the tunnel. But something grabbed her other arm with a vice-like grip, fingernails digging into her flesh. She opened her mouth to shriek, but only a choked gurgling came out. I whirled to see a figure in a tattered Joyland mascot costume, slouched and grotesque. Its oversized plaster head twisted obscenely, grinning with needle-like teeth. Matted fur and sharp bones jutted from the suit, and its eye sockets burned with a hellish orange fire. My stomach turned to ice as the monstrous mascot yanked Kara towards the shadowy tunnel of terrors, her feet dragging helplessly in the dirt. I grabbed wildly for her free arm, but razor-sharp claws lashed across my face, spraying hot blood. I stumbled back, momentarily blinded, hearing only Kara's muffled sobs. Blinking the blood from my eyes, I saw the fiend had hauled Kara into the inky folds of the canvas tunnel. Her screams cut through the night, echoing off the rusted carnival rides. I snatched up a discarded metal pole from the ground and charged forward, not knowing what horrors awaited inside. The stench of decay and rot slammed into me as I plunged into the suffocating blackness. My footsteps squelched on the soggy ground beneath. Kara's screams pitched higher, resonating off the unseen tunnel walls, seemingly coming from every direction. Kara! I cried out frantically, my voice swallowed by the darkness. Something skittered behind me, and I whipped around, swinging the pole blindly. It clanged off metal, then sliced through what felt like hanging rubber drapes. This place was an endless maze, a hellish funhouse with no escape. A gunshot cracked out, deafening in the confined space. The force of the blast slammed me from behind, and I slammed face first into the muck, choking on the rancid mire. Heavy footsteps pounded towards me, snapping bones and littered debris underfoot. I scrambled up, trying to run, but bony hands clamped around my ankles, fingernails slicing through skin and tendon. My wail of agony joined the chorus as I was dragged backward, my fingers gouging eight-inch furrows into the sludge, pole abandoned. Something huge and putrid loomed from the pitch, hungering growls echoing from its gaping maw. As it reared over me, I caught a glimpse of rotted flesh, yellowed fangs, and those damned fiery pits burning in its skull-like face. Then its jaws crashed towards me, swallowing my screams into eternal midnight. 
I don't know how long the creature's gnashing jaws worked at my flesh before the blackness finally consumed me. Perhaps it was mere seconds, perhaps an eternity trapped in that lightless hell. When my eyes finally opened, bloody and squinting, the first thing I saw were bars. Rusted iron bars, caked with filth and God knows what other detritus of the damned. Beyond the bars loomed an immense chamber of shadowy shapes and looming forms, a perverse cathedral of the unholy. My arms felt like lead weights, secured by chains to the damp stone floor. My tattered clothes clung to the jagged lacerations scoring my body. Blood oozed from a dozen horrific wounds. <coughs> dripping onto the floor in a steady cadence. A piteous moan whispered from somewhere nearby. Kara! I tried to call out, but only a reedy rasp emerged from my torn throat. Something shifted in the gloom before me. A hunched, wretched shape dragging itself across the floor. As it neared the bars, a sickening, sucking sound followed each agonizing motion. What remained of Kara finally emerged from the murk, her once pretty face ruined and splayed open in a rictus of suffering. The thing that had been Kara opened her mouth, tendons straining, but no sound came out but a damp, burbling wheeze. Her remaining eye, wide and white, pleaded with me as her ruined form was dragged back into the shadows, leaving a snail's trail of viscera in its wake. The resonant clang of metal on metal shuddered through the chamber. Heavy footfalls boomed, shaking the floor and causing droplets of filthy water to rain down. From out of the hellish murk towered a colossal figure, nearly scraping the unseen ceiling. In its vaporous hand it gripped a massive cleaver, serrated edge glinting in the omnipresent dimness. With each thunderous step, more of its grotesque form was revealed. A bloated, fungus-ridden belly, slick with ooze and studded with featureless, bobbing shapes. A gaping maw lined with rows of hooked fangs, spilling rancid spittle. Those same molten pits of hate burning beneath a shattered carnival mask. It raised the cleaver as it approached my cage, rancid lips pulling back into a grin of unspeakable malice. The curved blade dripped with fresh crimson in anticipation of the bloody feast to come. And deep in the bowels of that cursed amusement park, my tortured screams joined the unending chorus of the damned. The cleaver crashed down, shearing through the rusted bars of my cage with terrifying ease. White-hot sparks showered my shredded flesh as the monster's free hand lashed out, crushing around my throat in a vice grip. I couldn't breathe, couldn't scream, as the beast hoisted me up until my feet no longer touched the ground. Its rotten stench overwhelmed me, forcing bile up my esophagus. Up close I could see the splintered shards of plaster from its shattered mascot mask, the burning pits revealing nothing but abyssal darkness behind. With a heave of its massively muscled arm, the thing flung me across the chamber, my body smacking into a filthy pile of something with a wet crunch. Agony blossomed through my entire being as I scrambled to get my feet under me, slipping in viscera and awful. All around, shapes began emerging from the inky blackness, twisted humanoid forms, moaning and dragging themselves towards me with broken limbs and exposed bone. Their mutilated faces wore expressions of rapturous hunger as they closed in, beckoned by the scent of my fresh blood. I cast about desperately for anything, any weapon to fend off their gnashing jaws. My fingers closed around a shard of curved metal, the jagged edges slicing my palm. Gripping it tightly, I swung it in a wild arc as the first of the ghouls launched itself at me with a rabid screech. The makeshift blade sank into the soft pulp of its face with a soggy thunk. Blackish ichor sprayed across my front as it collapsed in a boneless heap. But there were more, so many more, clawing and grabbing from every angle with hooked fingers and snapping jaws. I slashed and hacked with frantic desperation, the screams and roars surrounding me in an ear-splitting cacophony. 
chunks of flesh and bone scattered as I laid about me with the blade, but they kept coming, heedless of their wounds or the parts I lopped from their bodies. Then a meaty fist crunched against the back of my skull, driving me face first into the mire. My weapon slipped from my numb grasp as I was pounded again, and again, into the filthy ground. Ribs cracked under the onslaught. I coughed up a flooding gout of blood, drowning in it and the other unspeakable fluids coating the chamber floor. The massive silhouette of the creature loomed over me once more, cleaver raised high to end my pathetic struggle, its jaws unhinged, tongue lolling obscenely as it prepared to drink deep of my spilled essence. In those final moments, I prayed only for the darkness to mercifully take me. But a thunderous boom from somewhere behind the behemoth gave me pause. Did I imagine the faint flicker of emergency lighting? No. That sound was unmistakable, the wail of approaching sirens. The monster hesitated, its swing halted as it cocked its head toward the noise. Then, with an earth-shaking roar of rage, it whirled and lumbered off into the impenetrable shadows, Cleaver dragging a furrow in the muck. The other ghouls took notice, breaking off their attack to scamper after their horrific master like cockroaches fleeing the light. Their wet slapping footsteps and eager shrieks faded away, leaving me awash in silence and my own rapidly pooling blood. With the last of my strength, I rolled to my back, each labored breath feeling like it might be my last. As I stared up into the pitch, the pulsing red of police lights began cutting through the gloom. So close. They were so close to finding this nameless evil. I tried calling out, but only a gurgling rasp escaped my lips. Perhaps they would find some trace of me here when they finally reached the inner sanctum of Joyland's unholy blight. A scrap of cloth a bone chip, some sign that I existed before being forever swallowed by the abyss. As the inky blackness closed in around my fading consciousness, I realized the truth. There was no light at the end of this nightmare, only the eternal darkness waiting with insatiable hunger to consume us all. The pounding of my heart was the only sound as the blackness closed in. The screams, the sirens, the thunderous footfalls of the monster all faded into ominous silence. I floated in that obsidian void, my ruined body numb and disconnected. Was this death? This empty nothingness surrounding me? If so, I welcomed its cold embrace after witnessing the unfathomable horrors dwelling within Joyland's accursed depths. Surely this hollow finality had to be better than the blazing eternity of torment that awaited in whatever soulless pit spawned those abominations. But just as the last flickers of consciousness began winking out, something disturbed the void. A faint whisper, growing louder, closer. It slithered around my fading mind, an insidious murmuring I couldn't shake. I tried to shut it out, but it burrowed deeper, calcifying into phrases discordantly jumbled yet profoundly ominous. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. My eyes flickered open, but there was only perpetual night pressing in hungrily from all sides. The chilling murmurs began tumbling together into a maddening chant without end or beginning. Through the shadow's cold embrace, we'll show you horror's twisted face. As if released from some unspeakable captivity, the voices multiplied like cockroaches skittering across my skin. I tried clawing at my ears, shredding my fingertips, but they crawled inside relentlessly. Feast upon their living fear and dance amid their bloody tear. I opened my mouth to scream, but my voice was swallowed whole by the swirling, gnashing cacophony. Louder, always louder, blaring through every nerve as if my brain were the bell about to crack and shatter into madness. We are the brood of Joyland's blight, heirs to this eternal night. Our fangs shall reave, our claws shall rend. This is your damnation's evil end. The last searing words seared my psyche like a white-hot brand. 
A sound like the flapping of thousand leathery wings exploded outward from that innermost inky womb. I saw them then, malformed beasts and twisted humanity melding into one massive heaving form. Joyland's true abomination flexed its unlimited shapes towards me, filling my perception as it unspooled into this existence, blotting out all else with its grotesque, undulating faces and hooked appendages. Its unified jaws unhinged, revealing rank barons of dagger teeth descending in eternal gaping hunger. I screamed and screamed into that nihilistic maw as the hateful chanting and exultant howls of the damned swallowed me eternal. For the lost souls of Joyland, death was only the beginning. Our torment was their calling, their jubilant liturgy reverberating across the dimensions of darkness, hungering for all realities to join their endless sepulchral blight. And as oblivion finally claimed me, I could hear it, the flapping of alien wings growing ever closer. And that's the end of our show. Thank you for watching.